stacked or tracked? Does it really matter all that much? Well, hi, my name is Justin. I'm the photographer behind JM Naturescapes. And in today's video, what my goal is to do is compare two different types of astrophotos. That is a single tracked shot versus a stacked astro shot. We're gonna be comparing the quality of the sky image and making sure that each image has the exact same amount of integration time. So my track shot, my settings are gonna be five minutes, F2.8, ISO 800. And then I'm going to do a, uh, no, sorry, let's do F4. F4, ISO 800, five minutes. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 15 20 second shots, F4, ISO, 12,800. That is equivalent in exposure, so each final image will have the exact same integration time and exposure value. If you're watching this video and you're a little confused on what tracked even means, there's this cool little device called a star tracker. And what that device allows you to do is it allows your camera to follow the rotation of the Earth so you can have pinpoint stars by having a five minute exposure, as long as everything is set up well. Five minutes is a little long, but I'm gonna see if my tracker can do it. So, and tracking allows for some other things, like if you have a five minute exposure, you can have a much lower ISO, so that you have much less noise, better high dynamic range, better colors, all around. I love track shots, it's what I always do. I very rarely stack my shots, but I've always wondered is there really that big of a difference? So let's find out. Well, slightly new plan. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically just shoot the longest, best exposure I can for the tracker. I'm not sure what that length is gonna be, but I'm gonna try like three, four, and five minutes. And then I'm gonna do the equivalent exposure settings with the 20 second exposure, and I'm gonna stack the equivalent integration time of whatever that track shot is. I might just end up taking like 20, 20 second shots, calling it good, and then in post, I'll stack the equivalent amount. And I'll let you guys know when I get to the editing portion of the video, where I edit everything the exact same way. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, welcome to the second portion of the video. Now we're gonna jump into Lightroom, we're gonna import those photos, and we're gonna start playing around with them until we like them. And we're gonna see the differences between tracked and stacked images. So let's go ahead and share my screen. So here we are, I do have the images already imported, uh, not the stacked file, because I'm gonna edit the files first for the single images. So I did two track shots. You can see here I have 245 seconds, although I do think this five seconds is actually the uh, time between the two shots. It was set to only four minutes, so it should be 240 seconds. But color balance looks very neutral, a little blue, um, but it was shot at 4200 Kelvin. So I really like the shot. This is the F4 14 millimeter ISO 800. Stars look fantastic. Noise is, you know, virtually non-existent. ISO 800 looks incredible on this camera. Um, stars look super sharp. Looks great pretty much from edge to edge. As you get closer to the top, you can start to see that there is some starch stretch, but overall looks pretty dang good. So I have a scratch on the lens. Um, just some very small scratches, and that's where that diffraction spike is coming from, unfortunately. But without further ado, you can tell it's tracked because the foreground is moving. What I'm going to do, I just have a basic preset here, Vivid Night Sky. I'm going to throw it on there. Um, but as you can tell, this is far too blue. So I'm going to grab the temperature slider, and I'm going to raise it up to where I like it. That's pretty good right there. Be a hair greener. Yeah, that's better. So that works for me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste it to all of them. I'm gonna shift, 
select all. Uh, you know what? Before I do that, I think I'm going to add a little bit more highlight reduction. I'll bring out the whites just a touch more. Get this nice in that mid-tone area. Just shrink the exposure just a hair. And I like adding a curves adjustment as well. Maybe about right there. Pick out some of the clarity. All right. For the purpose of this, let's just stick with that. We're going to sync. Synchronize. Have them all be the same. All right. So here's my stack shot. Sorry, not stack. This is my single exposure. So one thing that I noticed is if I go to my compare view, I'm going to compare these two side by side. You can see that the it's far greener in the single shot right here as compared to the track shot. So I'm going to try to do my best to match the color balance here with how green this is. So just to try to get like the closest comparison I can. So let's go here. I'm going to go back to my develop tab. And I'm just going to try to eyeball it as to what I remember. So really all I'm going to do is increase the green tint. Make it more toward magenta. A little bit too much. Probably around there. I think that's pretty close. Maybe 10. But you can clearly see the difference in noise. I go back to the compare. I don't know if I can zoom. I don't think I can zoom in on these. I can pair. But I'm going to try. Let's see. Can I zoom in? Let me zoom in. Oh, I can zoom in. Noise. Okay. So let's compare the noise. All right. So now you can see the difference between ISO 800 and an ISO 60, or sorry, 12,800 shot, I think. Let me double check. Um, pretty sure. No, this was ISO 10,000. Uh, an ISO 10,000 shot and an ISO 800 shot on the Canon 6D. So you can clearly see that there's way more noise over here. And you can also see that there is some much better nebulosity here in the ISO 800 shot. So the colors are just much better in the ISO 800 than the stack shot. But let's, sorry, than the single exposure shot. I have not got to stacking these yet. But... Now that I have this shot, no, this shot color balanced closer to the ISO 800 shot. Zoom back out. Go back to the develop tab. Synchronize these. So here, synchronize. I really only need to synchronize white balance. Check. Synchronize. Okay. File. Export. Don't know if you can see this, so I'm going to move this over here. I just have it same source as original photo. I'm going to put it in a subfolder. I'm just going to call this stacks so I know where it is. I want to do a TIFF. 16 bit component. I don't want to do any sharpening, resizing, or watermarks. I'm just going to hit export. All right. Next, uh, you know what? I should probably move my little head over here so you can see me. I don't know if that shares or not. But now I'm going to open up a program because I'm using Windows. This is a program called Sequator. I drag this over to this screen so you can see. I go to my star images. Double click. 
just going to pop this window up. Or why? It's taking so long. There we go. I'm going to go to my stack versus track file because that's where I put them. Stacks. Select all. Open. I don't worry about noise images or vignette images. I'm just going to save the file. Stacked shot. Stacked. Sure. All right. So now I'm going to do select region. I'm going to go to irregular mask. And I, you can kind of see this little circle here. I'm going to roll my mouse wheel, make it as big as I can. And I'm just going to color where the sky is. Get as close as I can. Trying not to go on top of the trees and just color the whole sky in. And I'm telling the program exactly where the sky is. All right. So I did get a little bit here on the trees. I'm going to roll my wheel the other way to make... Oh, sorry. And you left... Sorry. Right click. And it deselects the areas. But the program is pretty good about knowing what, what is what. I just made the wheel a little bit smaller just to get a little bit closer. All right, that should do. Now I'm going to click on this composition right here. I'm going to go freeze foreground just so it aligns a little bit better. I did leave my tracker on for this just so it was making sure that I would select the, or it would have the same frame all the way through. But the way this program works is when you don't have a tracker on, it will stack the foreground and it will stack the sky and it will line both of them up separately and create one image. It's a very cool program. And that is why you want to select the freeze foreground option. And we're going to hit start. And we're just going to give it a little bit of time. It usually doesn't take longer than a couple minutes. And after 20 seconds, we're done. Now I have a stacked image. Let's open that in Photoshop or Lightroom. Library. Import. Uh, I'm going to go to my hard drive. Stack versus tracked. Drop that down. Find that stacked file. Uncheck all. We're going to check this. That is the file. Import. Now I'm just going to click on this so I can see all the images. OK, back to develop. Actually, back to library. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, let me move my little face. Compare. The only thing is, is I can't. There we go. OK, I knew I could. All right, so here is my tracked shot. Where is my stack shot? This is my stack shot. Control click, control click. Okay, so now my shot here on the left is the track shot. My shot here on the right is my stack shot. And I mean, <laughs> not gonna lie, it looks almost identical. One of the benefits is, well, the, uh, I have some more cloud movement, and that's just because the clouds were coming in at the end of the night, and I wanted to get out of there, so. But otherwise, it looks like I might have had some dust on my sensor, or maybe my lens. I think that's what this is right here. I should clean my glass and my camera is what that means. Um, But otherwise, this looks pretty great. So the only thing that I can think is color looks just a hair better on the track shot. Maybe just a tiny bit. But I am very impressed with, quite frankly, how stacked shots look. Don't knock doing stacked shots if you need to do stacked shots. It's a great tool. Let's zoom in. Noise looks great. I only stacked 12 images, ISO 10,000. I think this looks good, but I think bar none, uh, the tracking really helps out with colors. I think, I think colors is definitely where it is with that low ISO, 
a little bit better dynamic range and some colors. Just wanted to show you guys one more final comparison between the stacked and tracked shot. We have the tracked shot here on the left, the stacked shot on the right, and it's the same exposure value and same integration time. So I also noticed that the comparison was just slightly a little bit different color balanced wise. So I tried to balance this one as close as I could. So this is your final kind of comparison between the two. So I hope you learned something in this video today and you don't knack stacked shots as you can get some absolutely incredible results. My favorite reason to do stack shots is if your foreground is an absolute nightmare of dead trees and they just squiggle all over the place and they're all over your foreground, your midground, everywhere. If you have a really complicated blend, then um, tracking is always or stacking is always a great option. So you don't have to deal with fixing a moving foreground uh, in your tracked sky shot. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And thanks again for watching. And I would love if you would like, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment. Thanks.